Oh, hey, what's up? Nothing much. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Okay, can you hear me? Yep, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. can't hear me. What the hell? I was just using this. Hello, hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Ah, oh, fuck yeah! Okay, I did nothing except just exit and rejoin the call. Wow, good job. Yeah, but now, but now you're not on my headphones, so let me if, let me know if you get echo. Okay. Interesting. So you're oh, yeah. doing OnlyFans again. Um, what? When was the last time you did that last? When was the last time you did it last? Like over a year ago. Why did you stop? I got funded by an independent research uh, organization to do sex research full time. Oh, so you didn't have time to keep up on the OnlyFans stuff at all anyway? Well, it's, just, it's hard for me to focus on more than one thing at once. Like, if I'm in a project, I'm in a project. Like, working, you know, 16-hour days, I can't think of anything else. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard. It's just been hard. I don't know how to how to work on multiple things. Do you, do you know how to do that? Uh, I'm literally the worst person in the world to ask. My whole life has been devolved, like, trying to finish this fucking Factorio mod over the past, like, two months, and it's having, like, significantly negative downstream impacts on my relationships in my uh, streaming what, career what so it? <laughs> it's just it's just dumb shit it's a dumb game don't ever oh you said you played this game before i love factor yeah oh uh, there's a mod pack called space exploration uh -huh. and i'm on like the final thing but it's like for a normal like playthrough if you're like focusing your whole brain on it the entire time it's like anywhere from 200 to 500 hours to finish and but i'm like streaming wow. and i do it at the same time so I'm, like 800 hours in and it's like i'm in like the final stretch but it, like i there's a whole bunch of shit i want to work on I keep, I have this idea in my mind where it's like, wouldn't it be so cool if I could do Factorio for like three hours a day, but I can't do that. It's like every, if I'm awake and I haven't finished this thing, I just have to keep like working at it until I finish it. But once I finish it, it's going to be the sigh of relief because it's going to open up like so much more free time and shit in my life. But yeah. Yeah. And I've said it a few times, but I'm pretty impressed at how you can play a video game and also talk. It's, I do I'm, take it as like a slightly a challenge. Like, can I say a thing that will make you stop playing the video game? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it just depends on what we're talking about but if i'm asking you like personal yeah. question about your life there's not much for me to like dwell on so i'm just kind of listening on you know, you know running around in circles I, I only played factorio through the base game no mods just straight to the the rocket launch and then i stopped because mm -hmm. it was e eating my life yeah yeah the base game is really fun but any um i'm very big on any game even the game that i used to play semi professionally starcraft um anything that has like an iterative learning process where like you do a thing and you have to go back and kind of like do it a little bit differently and you keep like expanding upon and building upon and improving upon that like those types of things uh, will like destroy my mind i'll get sucked into that like fucking heroin for her. like minecraft um i really like minecraft but i think for different reasons i don't know why i like minecraft oh. but um i'm thinking of a thing where like um Factorio, I mean, yeah, I don't have to use it. I can just say Factorio, right? Like, if I build a factory and it's, like, kind of efficient, like, I can go back and redesign things to make them more efficient, and I can do that over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? Like, reiterating on a process to make it more yeah. efficient. Better. Yeah. Have you played Dwarf Fortress? Uh, fuck no. Um, I have played a lot of a game called... Have you heard of RimWorld? Yeah. Oh, yes, I have. I play a lot of that game. Okay. I played a lot of Rome too, too. Yeah. And I Dwarf oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was inspired by Dwarf Fortress. And if I played Dwarf yeah, Fortress, it it's gonna be another like five hundred to one thousand hour time sync for me and I just can't that I gotta put that's like a twenty twenty four, maybe I'll try it, but it's these games destroy my fucking life. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um any any of those have you ever played this is another really deadly one. Have you heard of one called Oxygen Not Included? Uh I think I've heard of it, but I've never played it. Okay, yeah, that's another, it's like a colony, I don't know how you would describe like RimWorld or Dwarf Fortress, it's like a colony management sim thing where you like build things to collect resources and you don't want your people to die and whatever, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Should I play it? Uh, yeah, Action Not Included is very good, but okay. you probably shouldn't play it because it sounds like you have problems with these games as well, so. Well, I, I don't think I have as problems as bad as you do. Like I usually have about 100 hour time sync and then I'm done. Oh, that's Not good. Not like 800. Okay, yeah. Well, fuck, if you can do it 100 hours, then fucking yeah. Absolutely. Auction Not Included is an amazing fucking game. I okay. highly recommend it. Have you ever had any game that, like, fucked your life over? Like, where you sunk, like, way too much time into it? Uh, I mean, it might be RimWorld. RimWorld. I had a RimWorld problem for a while. A problem. I think RimWorld might be my second most played game. What is your most played game? Most played game. Huh? What is your most played game? Team Fortress 2. 
Oh, gotcha. Oh, you said you, I remember you said you had yeah. visions or dreams or something of that. Um, did you get into but gaming? You like, huh? I was going to ask if you got into gaming really late. Kind of late, because we were religious, so our games were kind of... Oh, yeah, you weren't allowed to have, like, shit of the house that was, like, weird or anything. Yeah. Um, but once I started getting, I was, I was pretty into it. But I mostly, I mostly get sucked in with these, this, like, Minecraft. I had a Minecraft problem when it first came out. What do you like um, about Minecraft? Well, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> what did you like? Why was it so addicting to you? What did you enjoy about it? I, you know, like, the, the, the building shit, you can... I like the the cumulative like survival stuff where you have to organize like what things are which. It's like it, the ways that's similar to Factorio are the things I okay. like about it. This is also a little creative. This is another deadly one. Okay, this is super deadly. Okay. okay. Have you ever heard of a game called Terraria? I have. I have not played it. If you like Minecraft and you like killing things and like the progression of like different arbors and stuff, Terraria is one of the best games of all time. It's like the yeah, it's like the Factorio of Minecrafts. Um, I don't know if I'd say it's better than Minecraft, it's a bit different, but uh, Terraria is very, 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 very good. Okay, I've had a lot of friends who've played it, but I've managed to avoid getting sucked in. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else? Uh, what do you do uh, in terms of like, you play some games, you've done escorting. Do you have any like weird hobbies? You seem like a person that, like rides horses or something. I play the accordion. Oh I... shit, true, okay. Not, not super well, but like enough that I carry it sometimes. Eh. I I ballroom dance. Wait, hold on. Wait, well. wait, why the fuck do you play the accordion? I don't know. Uh, like, do you play piano too, or did, was it literally like just the accordion? Well, yeah, I started out with piano, and so okay. accordion is a very easy step from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I also really like dancing. I dance a lot. I also teach uh, ugly dancing. What are you gonna expand on that? What is ugly dancing? Like, uh, uh, like I, t I teach dancing specifically for people who feel like uh, they cannot dance or have some sort of you know warlike relationship with dancing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, the goal is to do a dance experience where you are rewarded for dancing poorly. Interesting. <laughs> is it mainly experienced dancers that are like signing up to this as a joke, or is it like bad dancers that are signing up to it to gain confidence, or what is the? Yeah. Yeah, to all yeah, of them. Yeah, reframe the win condition to be what you're already good at, which is bad dancing. Okay, gotcha. And then I play really horrific music. I start playing normal music, and then we go through a period where you play like dark horror music or like sounds of people wailing, and you have to dance to that. And then you come back out to normal music again. Hi, I'm Renata. Okay, somebody like me a nine second video on this. Hold on. What? I think this was just a meme. Never mind. Somebody like me a dumb video on some crazy dancer lady. Okay, gotcha. Um, they said it was an example of what you were talking about, but I think they were just trolling me, so never mind. Uh oh. Um, do, you, do you dance? What do you think? No. Why do you think that? Because you seem like you spend a lot of time on stream, and most people don't dance as a base rate. Okay. It's a fair assumption. Yeah, absolutely fucking not. Sorry, did you say absolutely or absolutely? Not? Absolutely fucking not. No, hell no. <laughs> Maybe you should come to my ugly dancing class. <laughs> yeah, good one. Okay. Based on the way you said that. <laughs> cool. I did. Uh, I went to school for music, so we could do an ugly music class, and you could break out your nasty fucking oh. accordion. Okay. You, oh, I, you said that as soon as I inst immediately saw all the instruments in your background, and I cannot believe I didn't notice that before. Nice. Oh, I only play the sax and the piano. I can't really play the guitar. I have it there to practice someday once I finish Factorio. <laughs> it's going on the practice schedule. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I have, um, I wish, I've, I just started trying to learn uh, the bagpipe, which you use this practice chanter, which sounds horrific. Have you ever heard a practice chanter? I have no idea. Before? Nope. Okay, well, prepare. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> yeah, we're hyped. I hope it comes through the, uh, <laughs> Okay, does the instrument sound horrible, or are you just not doing it justice? The, the, well, it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Why do you only want to learn the most obnoxious fucking instruments? Why do you want to learn the bagpipes? Because, because I'm like, why get good at something everybody else is already good at? 
If well, you then why didn't you do fucking kink escorting? Things. You could have been like the number one fucking kink escorter, but you wanted to do the thing that everybody else did. So why the uh, was... why the different standard? No, honestly, honestly, I don't. You don't have. To, I was already doing weird shit as an escort. If you saw my escort page, I was already doing some niche stuff oh, okay. because my copy is fucking hilarious in you're... my ads, and that's something nobody else was doing. You're I was the first world's first funny escort. Wait, your copy or your comedy? Did you say? My copy. Wait, what does a copy mean? Like the copy on the website, like why you should hire me. Okay. Give me, give us an example. No, I have, you have to read the whole thing and then I have to link you my website. I don't mind being an escort. I'm just a little wary about. Oh yeah, you're fine. Okay. Being anyway. direct about it. I was just curious. You know, I, I don't know Texas. if you're showing up in like a Ronald McDonald costume or if you're just like do really good stand up while you're on top of somebody or, you know, you probably a lot of... see, you saw my gnome stuff, I assume. Uh, yeah, that was the one thing that yeah I got linked. And the the mime self molestation thing. So oh yeah, I've seen that one too. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so it's along gotcha. those lines. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. How would you raise a child differently from how your parents raised you? <laughs> Fuck. There's like twenty billion different ways. I'd say one is uh, not being financially fucking stupid. That would be the big one. Oh. Like your parents spent money too much? Yeah, they were. Have you ever heard of the term lifestyle creep? Yes. Yeah, that's a huge one. Um, being willing, open, being willing and open to talking about my son about like weird things. Um, so like, I always worry that like when I'm a parent, is it going to be hard to do this? Like all parents, but like having talk, like Frank talks to them about like masturbation, sex, like porn and stuff. Um, it's been easy to have those talks with him. Um, uh, yeah. Is your son like you? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, he is. Um, yeah. Um, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of, like, traits that a lot of boomer parents had. One is, like, unwillingness to talk to their kids about, like, important, like, emotional or sexual things. Um, like, my parents have never talked to me about, like, condoms or anything ever in my entire fucking life. Like, they, I can't even imagine my parents having that talk with me. They would be so fucking scared. Um, feeling like my kid can come to me with, like, difficult, like, social issues, and I'm not just gonna say some brain-dead parent shit. Um, so it might be like talking to girls or it might be like making friends in school or whatever. Um, yeah, I feel like I want my kid to always feel like he can ask me questions about this stuff without it being uh, like I'm going to be like really judgmental about it. That's like a really important thing for me, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, good job. Well, well maybe. But, yeah, we'll How do you see. think your kid is going to raise his kids differently than you raised him? Um, I have no idea. Who knows? He's 11 years old. I can't even think of that right now. Maybe he'll be yeah, gay you know, or something. Like you know, who the fuck knows? He might yeah, be a trans woman great. at some point, you know, who knows? Well, what's the last thing you cr oh, cr oh wait should i answer the question i didn't mean to just steam yeah you. go for it how would you raise your kids differently i do most things different most things I, most things to, i do i do want to homeschool my kids i think that was a great choice that my parents did good job parents but you know they're like you know evangelical christians and terrible at the, the like their philosophy was like you make the kid obey you mm-hmm no oh, what. that's a really huge thing. Yeah. Anytime I, I promised myself I would never... This is the worst fucking thing. If you say this, you failed as a fucking human being. I would never, ever, 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 ever say to my kid, because I said so. I fucking hate it when people said that. God, it drives me crazy. If I tell them to do something, unless I'm a fucking moron, there's a reason why I'm telling you to do something. If you need to clean your room, if you need to do a chore, if you do whatever, and I'll always explain the reason. Nathan, you have to do this, because if you don't, people are going to fucking hate you. If you don't shower or clean your hair, people are going to fucking hate you. They're going to think you smell bad. If you don't wash your hands, you're going to get sick. If you don't do this, whatever. Yeah. Anytime I hear a parent just saying, oh, well, because I said so, it's like, oh, God. It's one of my biggest fucking triggers of all time. I hate that. I hate that fucking phrase. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's so much of like, like if people, and I know that some, to some degree it's warranted, but like if people treated other adults like they do kids, it would be horrific. Mm -hmm. Like for things that aren't even necessary. Like sure, some things are like in, like important for safety or like don't eat, you know, donuts all day long. But there's a lot of things that aren't directly impacting health that you still feel so much manhandle their kids about. I'm like, I don't know. Like my parents had this philosophy with us because you know we were Calvinists, so you're a sinner upon birth. So my parents would refer to us as like little sinners. Mm -hmm. It's like ah, oh, you're just inherently <laughs> sinful. You're born with like a desire to rebel, to get your own way. You're super selfish. Like we were told this from as early as I can remember. Mm -hmm. And so their philosophy is you have to like correct them through the use of intense physical pain to make sure that they uh, like learn God's proper rules. Um, and if they want to do anything else, you just induce more pain. Jesus. 
Yeah, yeah. that's pretty shitty, I would say. But, you know, what can you expect yeah. from homeschoolers? <laughs> well, religious homeschoolers, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, that part was not super great. But uh, weirdly, I don't think it was, it wasn't, uh, like, that traumatic until I left home. I was like, this is a normal upbringing. Everybody uh, uses, like, specially made devices to hit, hurt, induce the amount of pain uh, when hitting kids without leaving any bruises or marks, right? Uh, and then I got home, people started to be horrified when I talked about it. And then after people started to be horrified, then I started to feel like I was traumatized, which is a nice little delayed reaction there. Do you, how do you feel about hitting kids in general? I probably bad like i don't want to say like forever 100 percent bad because some but like it seems like it should be a last resort mm -hmm. i think i'm what generally think? um i'm okay with like corrections in public if there has to be something like swift and immediate like if your kid does something really bad or he's fucking around you in a public place like hey stop uh, i think i'm okay with like that um i think this is i feel very strongly about this i have no research to back it up it's just it's a feeling i have and i'm gonna i'm gonna be i'm gonna channel my inner megan and say i don't know if any data point ever could change my mind on this any sort of delayed punishment is socio fucking pathic anytime you're telling a kid when we get home i'm gonna beat you or when we do this and you're like you're maintaining that thing of like we're gonna go home i'm gonna put you in a special place i'm gonna get a thing out and i hurt that's absolutely blows my fucking mind i have no respect for adults to do that to kids that's fucking wild to me but is, is, it, is it age dependent or is it all ages for any age it's like torture like actually like that's like a, that's like oh. what you would see in a torture movie like i'm moving a person to another area where they're going to be restrained they can't fight back and i'm going to inflict like physical pain on them yeah i don't know like i can i can see things that happen immediately like if a toddler or a kid needs like a swat on the butt or like a little smack on the arm or like hey like if you're in a public you get to correct fast but anytime you're like we're gonna go to this area and then i'm gonna fucking hurt you and it's like oh my god i don't know that's just mind oh, so fucking like the anticipation me. that's the thing that's upsetting yeah just you? everything about it right like do you have you ever like trained dogs before yeah yeah or like people in general you you like Corrections need to be like immediate and like sensible and like a delayed thing is just like so fucking weird to me when you're like putting off Yeah, I don't know. That's just I, I don't like that. Yeah, I think it's weird yeah. as fuck But yeah, I resonate with that. I would yeah <laughs> uh, Yeah, my parents were big into the psychological torture mm -hmm. thing Classic. Yeah, I think that's kind of weird, but you know, oh. I think that's kind of weird <laughs> psychological torture yeah oh, so especially because they're like adults too and it's like you're, yeah it's also too because i feel like adults would always say some shit like or all right so i've heard but they my parents didn't um my parents didn't hurt me uh but like when, i've heard adults saying some shit like oh this is gonna hurt me more than it hurts you and it's like bullshit i don't believe that i think you like it yeah. I think there's a lot of adults I see in like yeah, videos yeah. or shit. Or whatever. I think they like it. I think they enjoy it because yeah. it's this little fucking annoying piece of shit, and you just want to, ah, you just want to fucking hit them because it feels good, and they can't fight back, and you get to see them hurt, and it's like that primal shit. It's like that's what I, that's what I see when I see parents like hitting their kids. Like that's what it feels like to me. Like you founded this annoying little fuck, but it's legal for you to beat the shit out of them, and they can't even hurt you back. You know, the um. Yeah, but one of the most, it's, thank God, I'm, I guess I'm white, but I always hear this, like, I've heard this thing from enough black people. I don't know if this is a common black experience or I just talk to really fucked up um, black people, but I've always heard that there's like this special moment in a black son's life where his mom goes to hit him, but she can't because he's gotten a little bit too old, a little bit too big, and he like grabs her hand or something. And it's like this like mind fuck moment where it's like, I can't hit, I can't abuse my child anymore. And it's like that idea, like, bro, you're fucking wild. You're a horrible fucking human being. Um, I don't know, that just seems, that all of that just seems so like fucked up to me. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Yep. Now you gotta wait till dad comes home and it's like, oh my God. Yeah, parents just fucking abuse their kids. It's so commonplace. Mm -hmm. did, did your parents ever do the thing where they would like, uh, ask you what you did and then if you lied to them and they found out they would like punish you double mm. and then sometimes they would ask you like did you do this thing but like it's 50 percent of the time they already knew the answer 50 percent of the time they didn't so that like you trained you that like if they're asking you what you did like half the time they you're rolling the dice on if they know or not and if the punishment's going to be twice as bad um they might have tried i don't know I got really, really, really autistic about like breaking the rules for everything. Um, like if my parents locked things in different cabinets, I would always know where the keys were. Uh, I remember way back in the day, I wasn't allowed to have like games on like the family computer. 
and I bought like a second hard drive and I would connect and disconnect the little IDE ribbon or whatever so they could never know if I had shit. Um, sometimes I'd have like duplicate cables and stuff. Um, mm. Yeah, I was really good at not getting caught, but also my parents were busy with daycare stuff too. They probably would have caught me more if they weren't so busy with like doing other shit, but I got pretty autistic when it came to like hiding stuff that I did. Oh, and, oh, and it probably helped that my mom was very emotional. Um, so if I did something wrong and my mom found out, she wasn't like a schemer. Like she would be upset and she would come to me and just mm. say it, yeah. I've been- Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, I, well, it's good for me, yeah. I've been, I've been in relationships where um, uh, the girl gets emotional. So if I'm like lying or cheating or doing something stupid that I shouldn't be, like she'll confront me with it immediately. Um, and then I've been, my first couple of relationships were very abusive. And the second one I was with, um, my kid's mom, I love her to death. Well, I guess I don't know, well, I guess I do. Um, she was very good at like scheming. She was a schemer. So she would ask me questions and she knew the fucking answer. And I would think I'm being like so smart, like lying my way out of it. And it might not be until the next day where she'll ask me something. I'm like, oh yeah, of course not. And she'll be like, really? Are you sure you didn't do this? And I'd be like, oh fuck. I'm actually like fucked here. And I would try to like lie again. She's like, oh no, I don't think so actually. And I would just be, I would, and then we'd, yeah. That was, it was exciting because she was very, very, very clever with catching me uh, doing like dumb shit. Um, but also, yeah, kind of horrifying because then we would always oh, <laughs> fight right. afterwards. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but I guess there's like a different, I guess it depends on if your parents are more emotional and need to like resolve something that they find wrong immediately or if um, or if they're like schemers and they'll like kind of take some time to catch you doing some dumb shit, yeah. Yeah, my, my parents used a program, like a child rearing program called Growing Kids God's Way. Jesus Christ. Where they put you from, they, it started with the sleep training, like you're supposed to ignore the baby when it cries in order to train it that it's not, it can't control you. And so, it, like, it's a very like from the immediate time, like all the way through, it's like a like a system for like breaking the child down okay. uh, until it's like a thousand percent obedient. And the concept is you're supposed to get into its head. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to just uh, get the actions to be obedient. You're supposed to get the psychology to actually want to obey. So it was pretty intense. Gotcha. This is one of those like no empirical research back, just like fucking religious guides on how to fucking break down your kid boot camp style or whatever I'm guessing. Yeah. The program like had instructions for adult parents to like don't tell other parents what you're doing because people <laughs> might uh, people might get concerned and they just don't understand the religious way of things. Okay. Sounds yeah. great. Do you, how is your relationship with your parents yeah. now? Um, you said that they're religious and sometimes they stumble into stuff. Do you like get along with them? Can you go out to like, uh, like family events and shit or is it like? Oh no, my dad's an abusive dick. Uh, you know, both of my parents did the, the program, but like my dad, uh, really Loved took the to program. It. <laughs> uh, yeah. So my, my mom was more like, I think she just like genuinely thought like, oh, we, like she's very traditional, very like religious values, like the most classic mom archetype you can get. And mm -hmm. so. Uh, but she really loved us, and so she tried. I think she made mistakes, but like it came out of like a place of like desperately trying to do the right thing. And my dad's just a dick. He would, he would like, you know, he's the kind of person like I, I have it burned into my memory this one time where he was like spanking my sister, and but he but he wouldn't. He would like hold her and be like, "Are you ready?" and like force her to say yes, and then not, and then like. Uh, and then be, like do it again to like make her like keep like having to brace and say yes and he was like laughing as he did it yeah these are the types I, of I, things that i'm like this is like sociopathic like, levels of shit yeah. yeah i just like that's a like, bird say so he was a fucking dick uh mm. i don't talk to him i i left home when i was 17 that was the last time after that i cut contact with him um so sometimes i like briefly see him when i go home to visit my mom because my mom has a bunch of medical issues and can't really leave the house that mm -hmm. well so I like have to see him if I want to see my mom, but I try not to interact with them that much. Do you ever get annoyed? I'm sure you've had people throw it at you as an insult where they talk about how like, oh, like you never have a good relationship with your father. Oh yeah, yeah, but you know, daddy issues. Like, oh, of course she has a bad relationship with her father because she does stuff, mm -hmm. definitely. What's your opinion of education that teaches men to be more seductive? Um, it, I mean, it's going to super depend on, on the angle. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong on its face. But, I mean, obviously, if you're teaching how to do it in, like, a really creepy fucking way, it's probably not good. And um, a lot of it is going to, like, you have to understand that a lot of it is going to be learned through action. You can't, like, you can't just read a guide on human interaction. You have to, like, practice it. But I would say, like, on its face, I don't have any problems with it. But, I mean, I understand that there are ways that it could play out in being incredibly fucking weird. I'm having trouble listening because I'm still coming down from the adrenaline of this typing. Hold on, I gotta exit this this fucking 
Okay, you're saying basically that it can be weird, but it's like kind of chill. <laughs> yeah, it could go either way, yeah. I don't, on, on the, the principle of it, I don't care. Um, but I understand there are ways that it could be problematic. Yeah. yeah I love that word, problematic. Mm, triggers the fuck out yeah. of half the people I talk to. You could run for president with that answer. Thank you so much. What's your answer? Yeah. I think it's general. I mean, well, I mean, like, tech is about the same. Like, it can't be bad. I, I, I think a lot of the modern day stuff is pretty good, though. A lot of the what stuff? The, like, the more recent stuff is pretty good. Like... Like what recent stuff? You're gonna have to specify. Like like the like the old pickup artistry strategies. I think sort of the, the, the game has shifted to be a little bit more towards, you know, like inner game or whatever, as opposed to like fucking escalate kino. Whatever. Escalate kino? I don't have no fucking idea what that sounded like a car to me. Well, I don't know what you're saying. Escalate kino? <laughs> Uh, no, when I was um, younger, I went on a date with this guy. I was like 20, I think. Okay. And uh, it was just like recently after I'd gotten out of everything and I was still very new. And then he, I just remember I went on a date with him and then like, it's just one thing led to another. And then I woke up in his bed and I was like, how did you get me to sleep with you? And so he handed me a book and then I studied uh, pickup artistry for a few years because I wanted to know what the fuck was going on. But the thing is like, it still works on you even it still worked on me, even how I, even though I knew it was what was happening. Yeah, absolutely. I think I got one of those books, but I just stopped at the chapter at negging, so I just constantly insult whoever I'm talking to until they uh, either see. like me or block me. So you know, that explains a lot. Yeah. The um, it is funny that you mentioned the um, because I know like a lot of um, we kind of talked about it before, like being a good conversational partner. There are a lot of ways to do that, but even if somebody's doing it to you, it still feels like really good. Like even if I'm cognizant that mm, this person's mm -hmm. asking me like quite a few questions and they're like, uh, they might be feigning like curiosity, I don't know, but like, it, yeah, it still feels good to just like talk about myself, you know? Like you still have that feeling, even if you know you might be being worked over or something, you know? Yeah, do you, do you get this thing where people accuse you of like, um, like pretending to be feigning your emotions for other things? Mm, no, but I, I think that, um. I'm so selective now with like who I like give time to uh, that I don't feign. Like if somebody's boring to me, they're they're probably gonna feel it and know it. I'm not gonna sit there and pretend to be interested in them. I, I, I that sounds horrible to me. Maybe when I was younger, I would have. I, like so. I like that your interpretation to my question was about people that you know IRL. When I like, I think I meant like the larger people online, which I think is telling of me and you or something. Well, I feel like that's gonna come out of my personal interactions, right? Like, people can tell when I'm pretty bored, and people can tell when I'm pretty interested. Like, I'm pretty transparent about it, I think. How, on a scale from 1 to 10, how bored are you right now? Um, on a scale from 1 to 10, how bored am I right now? Um, with 10 being the most bored and 1 being the least bored? Yeah. Um, I'm up to a 4 now, but it's because I was at, like, a 2 with the type racing. But now we've, like, yeah. gotten away from the type racing where I was, like, so hyped, you know? If you say too low, you're going to come very dangerously close to complimenting me, and we can't have that. <clears throat> well, also, well, you have to leave room for, like, other experiences, too, right? Like, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, oh, I'm at, like, a two right now in this conversation. Like, what like what kind of a fucking person is, like, yeah. constantly, yeah, you know. But if I say, like, I'm at, yeah. like, a six, you're probably going to get offended. And I know that, like, women, emotional, all that shit. So, you know, obviously, I can't go yeah, above yeah. five. So I'm not going to say two. Um, if I say three, I don't have any wiggle room to make the type racer joke. So mm -hmm. I kind of settle on four in terms of, like, that's, like, the best rhetorical okay. answer I can give that gives me some, like, conversational wiggle room around it, you know? Was, was that all planned beforehand? Or are you sort of, like, developing what you thought would be going on after you said it? Who knows, man? Sometimes we do things for reasons, and other times we make reasons up. And, yeah, I don't even know right now if I just made that up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really feeling the lack of free will, of course. <laughs> yeah, right true, there. absolutely. I'm just here observing myself on my own journey, you know? Uh, it's like, what do you think enlightenment is? Do designer baby intelligence. Are there any cases in which you would support forced involuntary brain modification to change someone else's mind, urges, or behavior? Jesus. I mean, I think I'd have to say... Oh, no, I wouldn't. My go-to for is I try to think of horrible criminals or murderers. And so I think, okay, so for them, we'd have to force, but you don't have to. You could say maybe you could just stay locked up forever. That's valid. You could just stay in jail forever. Um, like brain modification. Like if you if we developed a technology to like develop an implant that would modify it, and we have like pretty good control over what's modifying 
what you're modifying. Well, yeah, that, that's the easy part. Like, that's fine. The question is, because you said involuntary, right? Yeah, involuntary. That's the hard part, right? Would you force somebody to get an involuntary behavioral modification? I feel like in terms of like me living in like my idealist, like liberal cap, uh, liberal utopia, I, don't, I think I would say no, that that choice is always gonna reside with the individual. If you wanna stay in prison or forever or whatever, that's fine. But if you want to opt to get the brain chip to leave early, if you want the Elon Musk implant, then maybe you should have the right to do that, yeah. Hmm. Oh. I was had a- Go. Huh? No, go, go ahead. ahead. And then I got a big question for you. Uh, it's not, I just like once I was writing a sci-fi story where like you can't implant personalities, but you have to, like it's the, the law that the personalities want you to remove it. And like the illegal personalities are the ones where after you implant it, you like you become very defensive and make sure that you, they have to stay. But anyway. That's just. Wait, did you say that was an idea like, for a sci-fi thing, or it is a sci-fi thing? It, it was. It was. It's a short story that I was working on, never quite finished. Oh, do you write a lot of stuff? Mm, I mean, not fiction anymore. I, I used to write a little bit of short, like sci-fi philosophical short stories, mm -hmm. but not so much anymore. Gotcha. Wait, what's your big question? Fuck, you're gonna fucking hate me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I completely forgot okay. it. I thought I heard a fucking gunshot. Um, oh, really? Yeah, hold on, wait, let's retread. Wait, fuck, where were we? Oh, the question was about the... Okay, it's fine. Oh, well, no, 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 wait, because it was a good question. But I'm... Oh, I remember what the question was. It's an important question. Are you a big Elon Musk simp? Be honest. Uh, uh... That's, it was the answer is, yeah, you absolutely are. Oh, my God. It's okay to just say yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I would say um, I would probably be classified under, yeah. I think he, in general, he's like been quite a positive force for the world. Wow. Okay. Obviously, no human being is perfect, but like, I think a, a good society would be the kind of person who rewards the kinds of things that he's doing overall. Which things are that? I, I, I just like respect A, like being highly agenty, like B, having like like a kind of expansive future plans, like having big idea stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like the kind of sh sh <laughs> I just like happen to glance at the chat and I'm trying to like, and I don't know. <laughs> don't worry I'm about doing. the chat. You're not talking to the chat, okay? Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I mostly ignore it. I was just like, as I was thinking, I happened to drift to someone saying sell <laughs> Ala stock and I was like, oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, like, yeah, like, I'm not saying I agree with everything he does, but, but, uh, Oh my average, God, the like, caveating now. Oof. Okay. I, I started out caveating. Okay. Uh -huh. But on average, uh, I think like, uh, my ideal society would, would reward rather than punish on average, the kind of person that he is. Okay. What are you, what is your feeling? Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, I just, yeah, you know, Elon okay. Musk. You said you said it's a big question. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think if it's something I want to fight a lot over with you or not, but maybe we will in the future. I I feel like um, I Elon Musk drives me crazy because there is there's an archetype of person, and I can't explain where it comes from or how it starts, but um, there is a um, when you develop a high level of proficiency in something, you can either go one of two ways you either realize how complicated everything can be, and that gives you a deep respect for everything in the world. So like, I was a very good StarCraft player, I know a decent bit about music. Um, and from there, I can imagine if somebody talked to me about some topics, like there might be a lot of complicated shit that I didn't even realize about this particular thing. Like I don't even know how complicated this can be. And so my area of expertise in one thing will give me some humility or respect in other things. But then there's a second path you can go where you become good at something and it makes you think you're the master of everything, that you're an expert at every single possible discipline and you can speak with authority on every topic. And I feel like two people that I feel like this happened to, it drives me crazy, are um, Jordan Peterson and Elon Musk, to where, um, regardless of how much I don't like him, I'll always give Elon Musk credit for 
cars and spaceships. I think that those are two incredibly fucking cool things that the United States should be proud to be innovating on now, um, especially the spaceship part, because holy fuck, that's super cool. Yeah. But God damn, does Elon Musk think he can be like an expert in every single fucking thing? It is so irritating listening to him talk about shit that he has no fucking clue about. And then same thing with Jordan Peterson too, to where he's like genuinely, I think, a pretty insightful person when it comes to talking about matters of psychology and insight into the human mind. But God, when he ventures into any other topic relating to economics, healthcare, politics, history, it's just like the worst takes imaginable but yeah uh yeah he, uh, i would not say i necessarily agree with him um or like find all of his traits to be ideal mm -hmm. so do you do you mind if i if i like uh well i don't know say my game name last call i don't know how you feel about like Promoting Say, things oh yeah, not because I'm out. I'm like literally farming you for out, like dollars right now. I'm making money off of you as okay. we speak. Okay. It's just as you say, it's askhold.io. If somebody wanted to to get this question game, ask ask one kind. This is I don't know. Ask hole. Gotcha. Nice. Very trippy design. Um. Okay. If you if you. <laughs> Let me get a drink real quick. I got a. I have an important question for you. Okay. Okay. It's about dogs. Very important. I need you to get in the right state of mind for this. I need you to think a lot about dogs. Okay. okay? Hold on. Ready? What am I talking about? I didn't hear you. There's a room next to you. Okay. okay. And in that room, there's a dog. You can okay. go in that room and you can get fucked by that dog. And every time you get fucked, you get a dollar amount. What is the dollar amount that you would get to let that dog fuck you? to push the button over and over and over again? Um, probably $2,400 an hour. And <laughs> okay, never mind. You just, you undershot that so much more than I thought. I Well, it, it, that's my, my escorting rate. And like, honestly, psychologically, I'm not sure it would be that different. You don't think getting fucked by a dog would be that much different than getting fucked by a guy? Okay. I it's Okay. Hey, twenty four hundred an hour. Is your, that's it's your rate. And you, you're not attracted to it either way. Would the breed matter to you? Like, what if it was like a Chihuahua in one room, and like a Saint Bernard or a Great Pyrenees or a Greyhound or something in the other room? Would it matter? I mean, probably prefer the Chihuahua. So, like, so it's like it's like less salient. Also, people are, people are saying white women, but I have statistics about which uh, ethnicities more likely prefer uh, bestiality, and it is in fact white people. But it's only very slight, and is overshadowed by uh, men. Men prefer it a lot more. So prefer prefer what aspect of it, or what like want to get fucked by animals, or in bestiality? Like as a, they're more interested in most things as a, as a base rate. Oh, okay. What yeah. what is the average dollar? amount people put on the dog room well usually it's per fuck not per hour so you already were uh <laughs> you already uh uh undershot quite a bit and i think usually it's around like five to twenty thousand dollars per fuck so you're very special okay yeah <laughs> you're very special thank you have What's you ever gone Wait, have you ever gone Go on ahead. a date with a person and broken out these cards? <laughs> yes, regularly. Nice. Okay. Cute. Okay. I made these cards because I was going around at parties and I would ask people, "What are we doing? What are we? What are we talking about? And why?" People couldn't answer, and so I would just like pick the most interesting question I could think of, and mm -hmm. eventually I started writing it down on a paper and I'd bring that around to parties. Um, and then people started saying you should make those a game. Okay. Gotcha. Makes so I sense. have people vote on the most interesting questions to them, and then that's how these were selected. Gotcha. Can Can I ask you one more question? Yeah. <laughs> how much money to rip the dog? <laughs> to rip the dog? Every time. The first question is called dog warts. This is called dark dog warts. Okay. How much How money many have you would asked you? This question I it's not it doesn't come from me. There is a very weird guy on my stream called Dan, and he thinks about 
this type of stuff a lot. He's kind of weird, and he's the one that uh, coined these yeah terms. So okay, did he tell you to ask this? Yeah, they're all in my chat spamming dark dog words because they all want to hear okay. your answer now. Yeah. Wait, so when we say rape, are we like it's a dog in distress or? Well, it's getting so I would imagine so. Yeah, they're not all like you that wouldn't care about it. Okay, Miss Special Brain. I mean, I'd probably be in distress. I just like have a higher tolerance for distress, to be clear. Okay, well, this is a little doggy with low tolerance for distress, so. But, uh, well, it, if it's like in some sort of pain, I could probably like offset the damage. Like, if you take part of the money that you make from the dog and like save eight other dogs' lives in a shelter. Okay, so then what's the number then? <clears throat> It'd be higher than 2,400. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I mean, I probably, I probably like, I mean, I, I would have to think about it, but like off the top of my head, probably like 10,000 and then donate some portion of it to save dog lives. Okay. So gotcha. that I feel better about myself. Okay. That's fair. What's the average response for this one? I think that I guess like 50,000 plus or whatever. Just depends on how sadistic the person is. Do you know is. how many dog lives you could save for $50,000? I don't fucking know. I've never thought about dogs and saving their lives with the rate money before. I actually don't know how many dog lives you could save, but probably a lot. You could probably save a lot of human lives for $50,000. Do you have strong feelings on that? About what? People donating money to animal charities when they're human suffering? No, I'm not a utilitarian or an EA. Well, you can just be a normal fucking human and feel like that's kind of weird. <laughs> you seem like a person. Uh, maybe not. Is that an insult? If I say you seem like a person that would be really big on EA, does it is that like an insult to you or no? Depends on how familiar you are with EA. You also seem like a person that would be a I'd be a little insulted. Okay. I'm not familiar. I don't know anything about it at all. You're just okay, like... okay. If you're only like tangentially familiar. Well, you're on Manifold, so you've got to be at least kind of around the community. Uh, Manifold is my community, okay? What do you mean? Wait, is Manifold like commonly used by the effective altruism community? Manifold, I was on Manifold long before you were. I'm like the third most followed creator on Manifold, bro. I, like, uh, yeah, because I don't have an account on there. As Still, I was an influencer for Manifold long before you came around. <laughs> Manifold on Manifold Marcus? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll make an account here. Yeah. I know. like the, I've met the creators multiple times. Okay. But right. he, but it's a, it's very much like the the rationalist and like somewhat EA community uh -huh. is on Manifold. But those are separate communities. Um. Uh, yeah, they're like. They're like this. Okay. Are you? Do you? How much do you know about EA? I nothing. I just, there's sometimes. Well, now I don't want to say because it it's gonna sound mean if I say it. It's okay. I I should talk to EAs also. No, I don't want to shit talk you. It would be shit talking other people that have identified as EA. Oh. It feels like there's a certain type of person that's like, I'm very big on effective altruism. And I'm like about the, it's like the effective altruism is like the veganism of donating, I think. Mm. That's what my feeling of it. Mm. But I don't know, you tell me. The veganism of the, oh, like, like it's the holier than thou thing? Kind of, yeah. Or like you're about to get a whole earful about why malaria is the only issue you should ever fucking care about. Or so, I, I don't know. Just, but I don't, I don't know shit about it. Just, that's just like my little, my, I'm like a tangentially yeah. like bouncing off the fucking curve of the gravity well of that community. So I don't know. I might not know anything about it. <laughs> Honestly, I do. I do. I have mixed feelings about them. I really like them. In, like, I think, like, they kind of like Elon Musk, actually. I'm like, I think that the proper kind of world would, would reinforce what they're doing, is what <clears> I think, but not necessarily that I agree with everything that they do. Okay. But you like that kind of because Elon Musk said it. So interesting. Okay. Gotcha. I like what? Because Elon Musk said it? Elon Musk said that we should. Uh... <clears throat> reward or like move in an EA direction when it comes to like rewarding charities or donating money or whatever. Is that what you said? Uh, I, I, I know I liked EA well before I liked Elon, Elon Musk. Wait, did I just invent? Um, did I just hear Elon Musk out of nothing? I said Elon Musk, but I think maybe maybe I, I misphrased the words around oh. it. Yeah, it's probably. like similar to the way that I like Elon Musk, which is that like, I'm oh. not necessarily like, I don't think he's like perfect and he definitely has issues, but then my ideal kind of world would like incentivize Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Okay. I heard you differently before. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I, the, the, the well, it's because I have. I don't know. The EAs are nice. They're but they're like, 
a little proper for my that's good they don't like edgy they find edgy stuff to be quite offensive and are very like, pr conscious i feel like i just like stirred up so much shit in that community now for you that you're gonna get fucking shit on for everything you just said so i'm good oh, I've, I've said all this before yeah. oh, okay well <laughs> to them it's just, it's just like a big like in group like thing you know old stories oh yeah and bullies and yeah i know what you mean but the rationalists are chill, though. I like those people. I mean, they're called rationalists, you know? How could they not be yeah, chill, right? My friend group, we call ourselves the logic bros. Like, we're, like, super cool, you know? We're, like, very awesome, you know? Yeah. We only use logic, you know? <laughs> I'm implying that anybody that's not part of the logic bros is illogical, you know? But <laughs> The rationalists and the unrationalists. Exactly. Imagine not being rational. Like, Jesus Christ. That's like not voting on the like no child left behind bill. Like, are you gonna leave children behind? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, right? Yeah, Jesus. everybody agrees it is quite an unfortunate name. Are you part of any weird communities? Uh, yeah, we call ourselves the Dally Ban. That's my DGG community. The the Dally Ban. The Dally Ban, yeah. We're uh, it's my website. Okay. We have That's our, good. you know, we chill, yeah. Oh wait, I do, I do, I think I do have one sponsor right now. Fucking Manifold Markets. True. <laughs> hey, you guys, don't forget, if, you, if you're doing really well in the Manifold Markets, you can go to manifold.market slash destinygg and you can redeem your things for a subscription on my website. You Cash in now, same guys. fucking sponsor? Yeah. Jesus. Cash in, guys. Claim a tier one sub. Pay 1,000 Manifold bucks for it, okay? Go and redeem yourselves, you fucking losers. Not enough of you are doing it. 